Hi, welcome to Prime Recap. The son of the two greatest heroes on the planet goes to a superhero school, but since he has no powers, he must keep this secret while the children of the supervillains try to destroy him at any cost. Today we will recap the story of the 2005 movie, Sky High. Josie and Stevie Stronghold are two real estate brokers hiding a secret, they have superpowers and are considered to be the greatest heroes on the planet. Together, Jetstream, the fastest woman on the planet, and the commander, who is the strongest man in the world, had a son, Will Stronghold. Unlike his parents, Will is an ordinary young man with no powers, but in order not to disappoint them, he spent his entire adolescence pretending to have super abilities. Now that it's the time for him to go to high school, the commander and Jetstream enroll Will in Sky High, a school that helps young superheroes develop their powers. On the first day of school, Will is in his room listening to music when he hears his father calling. To maintain his cover, Will rushes to put as many weights as possible on the bar. So when Steve enters the room, the boy pretends to be finishing a series of 200 repetitions. Happy that his son has apparently inherited his power, the commander says he is proud of Will and calls him for breakfast. As soon as they go down to the kitchen, father and son meet Layla, Will's childhood friend, who is also going to her first day at Sky High. Together, they sit down at the table and begin to eat. But before they can finish, the mayor calls the commander to say that he needs him and the jet stream to deal with a creature downtown. In a hurry, they go to the secret base, change clothes, and fly downtown where they find a giant robot destroying everything in its way. To defeat him, Jetstream throws the commander, who lands a super powerful blow on his chest, causing the robot to shut down and fall to the ground. After this not at all challenging victory, the commander goes to the robot and takes its eye as a trophy, something he always does. From home, Will watches the fight while Layla uses her powers to revive the houseplants, but when it's time to go to school, they prepare to go and walk till the bus. After Will and Layla get on the bus, the driver says that all the freshmen are already on board and activates the seatbelts, securing everyone in their seats. He then swerves onto a highway under construction and plunges into the abyss. Not understanding what is happening, the students become desperate as the vehicle is in free fall, but suddenly wings and a gigantic turbine appear on the chassis of the bus that begins to fly towards the sky. After this terrifying scare, the driver starts flying over sky high and explains that the school is floating thanks to anti-gravity thruster technology as a safety measure. After the explanation, the driver lands the bus in the parking lot and all the freshmen disembark and start walking towards the door, but halfway through, Speed, a student with super speed, starts running around them, causing everyone to group together. After Speed stops running, another student named Lash, who probably had eaten a Gomu Gomu no Mi and turned into rubber, approaches and tries to steal money from the students, but the class representative Gwen, shows up and, sends them away. Free, the freshmen walk to the school gym where the principal gives the welcoming speech and explains that they will now do power selection, which is a kind of test where the students show their abilities and the coach decides if they will go to the hero or sidekick team. When the selection begins, one by one the students are called to the stage and go through the selection, with all of Will's friends being sent to the sidekick team, including Layla who refuses to participate in the test. After the girl, coach calls Will to the stage and already throws a car at him thinking he has super strength like his father. Realizing that this is not the case, the coach thinks he flies like his mother and activates a mechanism that throws him away, but since he can't fly either, Will hits his back on the wall and falls in the middle of the bleachers. With the boy still on the ground, the coach asks him to stop stalling and show his powers, forcing Will to reveal in front of everyone that he has none. After being selected for the team of sidekicks, Will goes to the infirmary and asks the doctor if there is still a chance of him awakening his powers, but the doctor replies that it is impossible to know, because children of heroes can inherit the powers of both parents, but they can also live their entire lives without superpowers, as is the case with the driver. After the treatment, Will goes with his friends to the cafeteria, where he notices that another student is staring at him. When he comments to his classmates about it, Zack explains that he is War and Peace, the son of a supervillain who was captured by the commander and sentenced to four life sentences. In other words, on the first day of school, Will's secret has been exposed and he has already gotten an archenemy. After school, Will comes home and asks to talk to his father because he wants to tell him the whole truth, but Steve doesn't pay attention to the boy and takes him to a secret room in the house. Inside the secret room, Steve keeps the eye of the robot he picked up earlier and begins to show all the trophies he has achieved together with Josie, until he arrives at Pacifier, the weapon of the Royal Pain, the first villain they defeated together. Finally, Steve shows Will that he now has a space for his trophies and ends by saying that he is happy because now the three of them will be able to fight crime together, which totally takes the courage out of Will to tell him that he has no powers. 
But while father and son are talking, the giant robot's eye activates and starts recording everything. That piece of brass was actually a trap to get the commander to take a spy camera home. The next morning, classes finally begin and the students have their first lessons and training as a sidekick. After class, Will takes advantage of his parents being away and takes his friends home to do the work, but suddenly the commander arrives by surprise and, happy that his son has made new friends, he asks them to introduce themselves. At this point, Ethan tells about his power to change into a liquid state, Zack talks about his ability to glow, and Magenta explains about how she can transform into a guinea pig. After the introductions, the commander offers the young people a sandwich and goes to the kitchen along with Will to prepare them. While making the snacks, Steve asks how they became heroes with these powers and, thinking this is a good opportunity, Will takes courage and tells to his father that everyone is a sidekick, including him. Upon hearing this, Steve is furious believing that the coach was sabotaging him. But Will says it's not that and finally reveals that he has no powers, taking a huge weight off his back. The next morning, Will goes to school and continues to attend his classes as usual. At break time, the boy is carrying his lunch to the table when Lash reaches out his arm and pulls his leg, causing him to drop all the food right on top of Warren. Thinking he did it on purpose, Warren stands up angrily and starts throwing fireballs in Will's direction, who defends himself with a powerful plastic tray. Knowing that if he stands there he will end up as barbecue, Will tries to run to the fire alarm to neutralize Warren's powers, but Lash realizes this and once again grabs his leg, causing him to fall to the ground again. Helpless, Will crawls under the tables and crawls toward the alarm while Warren keeps trying to hit him with fireballs. Realizing that if they do nothing Will will be eliminated, Layla and the others try to interfere, but Warren won't stop and starts preparing to attack them, making Ethan melt completely. Wanting to protect his friends, Will finally awakens his strength and lifts the table where Warren is, throwing him hard against the wall. Furious that they thought he would be defeated with this alone, Warren sets his arms on fire and prepares his final blow, but Will manages to defeat him by putting out the fire with the fire extinguisher that Layla throws at him. As soon as the fight is over, the principal appears and takes the two to the detention room where Will tries to make up, but Warren refuses and says that next time he will eliminate him. The next day, Will goes to school as normal and sits down to attend class, but as soon as he arrives in class, the teacher of the sidekicks tells him that he has been transferred to the hero's class and gives him a new schedule. On his first day as a hero, Will goes to Mr. Medulla's science class and sits down with Gwen to build a freeze ray, but upon realizing that the boy is doing everything wrong, she uses her superpower of controlling technology to build a freeze ray, and offers to be his private monitor. After science class, Will sits down with Gwen for lunch and calls his friends to join the table, but as soon as he does, Gwen's best friend Penny uses her shadow clone Jutsu to fill all the seats, forcing Layla and the others to go to another table. After lunch, Will goes after his friend and, as an apology, he makes a date at her favorite restaurant, but as soon as they finish talking, Ethan comes up behind them asking for help, and is immediately pulled in by Lash. Confused, Will runs after him, and finds the duo Lash and Speed trying to put him in the locker, but manages to convince them to let his friends go. Feeling that they are assured by Will's strength, Ethan and Zack end up challenging the two bullies in a Save the Citizen match. In this game, a pair of heroes face off against the team of villains to save the hostage before the three-minute time limit runs out. When it comes to the day of the contest, Lash and Speed choose to be the villains and challenge Will and Warren to be the heroes. With the two teams defined, the coach begins the challenge. Lash stretches out his arms trying to grab Warren, but Warren manages to flare up his body and get free easily. As Warren hurls his fireballs at Lash, Will tries to save the citizen who gets closer and closer to the shredder, but every time he gets close, Speed hits a high-speed blow that knocks him to the ground. Tired of being beaten so badly, Will leaps up and lands a punch so hard on the ground that it makes the entire school shake, knocking the two villains out at once. With the advantage, Will ties Lash's arms to the pole, leaving him completely immobilized. With only 40 seconds left, Will rushes to save the citizen, but when he sees that Speed has created a whirlpool that drains all the oxygen near Warren, he gives up saving her and rushes to help his partner. With 20 seconds left, Will grabs Speed by the shirt and releases him toward Lash, causing both of them to hit the wall and black out. With less than 5 seconds left on the timer, Will holds Warren by the clothes and throws him toward the doll, preventing her from being shredded at the last second. After this epic victory, Will goes home to tell what happened and is surprised to see Gwen in the kitchen talking to his mother. According to her, some unforeseen events have occurred and the tutoring classes will have to start today. Without remembering his commitment to Layla, Will accepts and the four sit down to dinner, but during the meal, Gwen reveals that she has also come to invite the Commander and the Jetstream to receive the Heroes of the Year award during the school prom. After dinner, 
Will walks Gwen home and asks her to be his date to the dance. Meanwhile at the restaurant, Layla has been waiting for Will for hours when Warren shows up and advises her to share her real feelings for Will. The next morning, Will runs into Layla at the bus stop and remembers the date. But instead of trying to do something to redeem himself, the crazy man just tells her that he is going to the dance with Gwen, leaving her extremely disappointed. On the bus, Will notices that Layla is acting strange and decides to ask her what happened, but not knowing what to say, she invents that Warren also asked her to the dance. At lunchtime, Layla goes to the incendiary boy and tells him about what she said to Will, but although he doesn't really like the idea, he agrees to go with her to the prom just to make his rival angry. As the days go by, Will becomes more and more distant from his friends because of Gwen, while Layla increasingly uses Warren to try to make him jealous. With two days left until the prom, Gwen goes to Will's house and somehow she manages to convince him to throw a party, with the house completely full. Gwen says she wants to go somewhere more private and the boy ends up taking her to the secret room, but this was a big mistake. While the two are distracted, Speed, who has managed to infiltrate, passes behind them and steals the pacifier. Outside the house, Layla is passing by on the sidewalk when she hears the racket inside the house and decides to go there to understand what is going on. As soon as she arrives at the residence, Layla starts looking for Wool, but Gwen sees her first and starts humiliating her without the boy seeing. Extremely upset, Layla walks to the door until Will appears and tries to call her, but the girl refuses to talk to him. Finding this all very strange, Will asks Gwen what happened and she tells him everything she told her friend. Furious, the boy says that she had no right to do that and throws her out, leaving her completely hysterical. Eventually, he decides to end the party and tells everyone to leave, but just as Will is about to do so, the commander and the Jetstream arrive and drive that whole crowd out of the house. With the house empty, Josie and Steve start to fight with Will, but he is so upset that he doesn't even care and just goes to his room. When the day of the prom arrives, Will tells his mother that he doesn't want to attend, she hands him the graduation album from her time to make him rethink, but this fails to change his mind and he is just left watching the album as she heads to the party. After his parents leave, Will decides to look through the album and discovers that Pacifier was created many years ago by a student in Sky High's science lab. Believing that this could be Gwen's mother, Will looks at the place where the Pacifier should be and finds that it is no longer there, finally realizing that Gwen was just trying to distract him to steal the object all this time. Once he understands her plan, Will realizes that everyone at Sky High has fallen into her trap and goes straight there. At the high school, the commander and Jetstream arrive at the dance where they are greeted with much applause by everyone, but suddenly, Gwen starts giving a supervillain speech, puts on the royal pain uniform, and picks up Pacifier. Extremely confident, the commander just stands by while Gwen gives her speech, but when she finishes, he is the first to be hit by the Pacifier, a ray gun capable of turning anyone into a newborn baby. Realizing that her husband has been hit, Jetstream starts flying towards the enemy, but is also hitted by the laser beam in midair. At that moment, chaos begins to spread through the hall and everyone tries to run outside, but Lash, Penny and Speed close the bars, trapping all the students and teachers who one by one are turned into newborns. In the midst of all this chaos, Warren opens a passage in the ventilation duct through which they escape. At the same time, Will finally arrives at the school and while he is passing through the hallway, he sees Zack glowing in the ventilation pipe and helps them out. With everyone outside, Will apologizes to his friends for being a bad person and declares himself to Layla. Just then, Lash, Speed and Penny find them in the hallway and prepare to attack them, but knowing he has no time to lose, Warren tells Will to go after Gwen while he deals with the three. Realizing that things are about to get ugly, Zack and Magenta return to the ventilation tube while Layla, Warren and Ethan are left to deal with the three of them. Since he is much weaker, Ethan is easily caught by Lash who tries to hit him, but to avoid the damage, he manages to melt away and crawl into the bathroom. Confident of victory, Lash goes after him and starts checking the toilets, but ends up getting too close to the toilets, giving Ethan a chance to plunge his head into the toilet and flush, causing him to get his face bogged down in the sewer. Outside the bathroom, Speed runs as Warren tries to hit him with his fireballs, but as he speeds up, he ends up almost hitting Ethan who is forced to turn into a puddle of jelly to avoid a collision. At high speed, Speed runs over Ethan and ends up losing control, flying right into the wall. In the cafeteria, Layla refuses to attack as Penny corners her further and further, but she changes her mind and decides to strike back when the cheerleader punches her in the face. In order not to be eliminated, Penny decides to reveal the whole plan and tells Layla that Gwen has sabotaged the school's anti-gravity thrusters, which means that in 10 minutes Sky High will begin to free fall. Knowing this, 
Layla gets together with the group of friends and together they come up with the idea of having Magenta transform into a guinea pig to enter the room and reset the system. As Magenta advances down the pipeline, Will finally finds Gwen outside the school and says he's sorry his parents beat her mother, but Gwen explains that the day she fought the commander in the super jet, the pacifier ended up exploding and hitting her, causing her to turn back into a baby. She has always been the royal pain this whole time. After this revelation, Gwen gets tired of talking and finally takes action, flying Will into the ballroom. There, they start exchanging several blows until Will finally manages to corner her, but just as he was about to deliver the final blow, Layla arrives in the hall and ends up taking his attention away, giving Gwen the opening she needed to throw him out of the school. With Will in free fall, Gwen gets up and takes off on Warren and Layla, but suddenly Will appears flying after her, revealing that he has finally awakened his mother's powers. Now that he can fly, Will suspends Gwen and drops her from the ceiling, opening a crater on impact. Finally, he flies up to her and lands one last punch on her helmet, causing her to pass out. Although the royal pain has been defeated, the timer zeroes out and the thrusters begin to fail, causing the school to go into free fall. Trying to save everyone, Will flies down from the school and uses his new powers to try to stop the fall. But even with all his strength he can't. Just then, Magenta finally arrives in the thruster room and starts gnawing on the wires of the sabotage device while everyone screams in despair. With the school about to collapse in the middle of the city, Magenta manages to chew through the wire and make the anti-gravity system work. Outside, Will manages to slow down the school at the last second and flies with it back up into the sky. With no more villains around, Warren picks up the Mr. Medulla in baby version and takes him to the lab to fix the pacifier, that way he can get everyone back to their correct age. With the end of the villains, the college becomes a peaceful place again and Royal Pain is finally arrested. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.